Okay, so good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you may be in the world today, and welcome to the first, I hope, and we hope, of many Art With Me virtual art panels, where we'll be discussing where art sits in this increasingly disrupted world, and why art matters more than ever in the new normal, whatever the new normal is, not just to traditional art lovers and artists, but to all of us. I'm Andrew Nichols, an art lover myself and a recent founder of a new art platform, and I'm delighted to have such an esteemed panel today joining me to discuss why life really is art. On my right or left, I don't know, or somewhere in the spaces in between us, um, I have Mary Dynaberg, one of New York's most renowned art advisors, who has decades of experience working around the globe and advising art institutions, individuals, corporations, and others on how they work with the arts for the greater good. To our Art With Me community, David Graziano needs no introduction. He's the visionary behind and the co-founder of Art With Me, an artist and one of the most passionate creative individuals I, for one, have had the honor to work with. It's a little bit crazy, too. Um, and then we have the extraordinary talented Heather Harmon, director of the Nevada Museum of Art, Las Vegas is not all about gambling. And also is building, I didn't know this word, a museological private collection representing the most powerful female social and political voices throughout the 21st century. So thank you all for joining today. Just so you all know, I've got aftershave on. I put it on specially for you. And um, let's start with you, Mary. Mary, um, you believe that art is a visual philosophy and about storytelling. How do you feel this is so relevant in today's new world? And how is the way we view and appreciate art going to change in the future? Well, I think it's going, oh, well, first of all, I think it's a two part question. So very quickly, relevance is that art uh, to me and to many, many people studying art and making art, <laughs> art is visual philosophy. And if you looked at, um, for instance, during the Impressionists, the, the, um, they got excited about Impressionism because there was the uh, color wheel invented at that time or discovered at that time. So a lot of times you can look at um, uh, uh, like Cubism and Newton, you could look at a lot of different periods of uh, science and um, culture and see that art then reflects it. It either precursors it or, um, or reflects it afterwards. So for artists, what they do is they take in the world and then they come out with, with some sort of conversation about it, some sort of narrative, some sort of vision about the synthesis of what they see and feel. So to answer the second part of your question, the, the reality is that we all are in a time now where we have to look deep into ourselves. We have to a, amuse ourselves. But to do that, we have to understand ourselves and come to peace with ourselves. And artists always have a knack of seeing in a certain open and creative way. And if we at Art With Us can impart that, to people, give them some tools, some discussions, some ways to look at things, then uh, in the future, that could be really helpful, obviously, but not, but um, on a way forward, I think we're gonna really need this in the world we're living in. That's great, thank you, Mary, for that. David, over to you. You're a vocal advocate of art as a lifestyle. What do you mean by that? And how can we better engage with people to help them understand how and why art matters to them and to everybody? Well, um, you know, I mean, if you, if you ask somebody what is art, I think it's a relatively, it could be a very subjective question. Um, and there's definitely, I think, a lot of definition and explanation for it in its traditional way. But uh, we, we're also looking with Art With Me um, and what we mean by like art is as a lifestyle is uh, we want to also let people understand that art is in everything that we do, right? So it, 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 could, it could be in, you know, we do, and uh, you know, a, a creative process is in, in almost everything we do from how we dress or how we cook our food or the way that we write or the way that we decorate our home or the way, so you have, it's embedded in almost all of the things that we do throughout the, the course of a day. 
And so um, the creative process is, is what we're, we're looking to, to celebrate. It's what we're looking to explore. It's what we're looking to evoke uh, emotion. And so with Art With Me, um, it's it, it, it really is trying to embody basically highly creative processes. And it could be in many different categories. Uh, obviously, a heavy emphasis on the visual art and, um, and performance art. We also want to have a, um, a heavy immersion interactive experience with art. So the idea is that um, as Art With Me uh, progresses and evolves, it, it really is a platform to create these highly creative, interactive, immersive art experiences. It could, it, it, it'll have a variety of, of, um, of range. We obviously have our six pillars, and, and I think uh, the creative process is embedded in every one of them. But we really want to focus on how do we, you know, evoke uh, emotions, um, especially in my area of interest is really uh, is creating sympathy and empathy and this, we have this whole se segment on care with me and how we create uh, these emotions through these interactive art experiences where people are engaging in uh, an interactive art piece in, in groups or by themselves and, and really exploring how we push the boundaries of what it means to, to, to not just look at a piece of art or, you know, or, or, or watch a performance, or, but to be really immersed in it and, ex and explore that, that, that connection between how we look at art and how we interact with art. Is that? Right. Thank you very much. Heather, over to you now, your turn. Um, you've said that one of the biggest changes right now um, in the art world is the financial change. We were chatting the other day and that's what you said to me. What do you mean by this? And how is it gonna change the landscape for art consumers and artists? Well, as we know, we are universally sharing in the uncertainty of our global economy. And not unlike many artists and nonprofits are facing enormous fiscal challenges. Museums are experiencing the largest layoffs in history and the sales of artworks have slowed tremendously. In America, most of the funding from the arts is generated privately from individuals and foundations, many of which have been deeply affected by COVID-19. Art fairs are being canceled, exhibitions are being canceled. So what that creates is a void of content. And how are we all mutually gonna address this need for content in the virtual space? You know, as, as David was mentioning, um, arts experiential, immersive. So how are we going to deal with art in a virtual space? Are we gonna be able to create those immersive, sensory, intellectual experiences in the digital sphere? And I think that's something that we're looking towards as an institution and as art lovers, how do we continue to financially support the arts, financially support artists' work, and how do we be as helpful as we possibly can in creating both platforms and an infrastructure for making work in a transitory stage? Great, thank you for that. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll sort of come back if some people have some sort of feedback on some of the things they've heard other panelists saying and everything. I'll ask a few more questions and then maybe if people have got some things they want to sort of come back on, discuss, extrapolate a bit, I think that'd be a really good opportunity to do that. But David, um, tell us a bit more about the Art With Me vision for people who don't know Art With Me and how it's manifested itself to where it is today with your event now obviously rescheduled along with everybody else in the world, how do you see the potential social changes we're experiencing, changing the way we look at art and actually, you know, what's gonna, Art With Me gonna be? Um, well, okay, a lot of layers Quite a big to that question. question. <laughs> we'll, um, <laughs> we'll start with, uh, um, you know, in the, in the very simple form, in, in when we, we were developing our intent as to why we were going to do this. Um, we really wanted to, uh, we asked the question, you know, how can we use art and being artists being uh, inspiring? 
So I don't think anybody would deny that art is inspiring. And how do we use the creative arts as a lens to, to showcase uh, in, environmental issues? Hello? Oh, I think we might have Hello? lost you, David. Oh, I think he's frozen. Mm. Okay, so what I would do is go on to Heather or myself, and then hopefully he'll come back together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think this is a so so Mary, we we're going to come back to you. As um, I've heard you talk about art being a verb and not just a noun. What do you actually mean by this? Um, and you also teach classes to people about you know. Um, how to see, why it's so important to see. Why is that so important, particularly now? Well, for the, for the first part about art being a verb and, uh, and a noun, um, or not a noun, um, when you look at art and you see, a lot of people see it as an object. They see it as a sculpture to decorate something with or to look at or experience, the same way with a painting or an installation. So it's an object. And um, in certain times, you could even almost say like it's a product of something, a product of a vision. So we, when, when an observer of art looks at something, which is where most great art uh, experience takes place between the object and the viewer, that observation is what makes that art alive and active and, yeah. and makes it experienced by one, one or a being. Okay, so you have that aspect where that art is a noun, but the act of um, looking and apprehending and seeing, that is the verb. That is when you use the practices that an artist makes art with, which is observation, which is uh, using culture. Hey guys. Where, we where got you back, David. We got David back. Mary was just talking a little bit about art as a verb, not just a noun. And then after she's chatted about that, we can go back to you, David. So, so the cult, the, um, so when art, when, when somebody is looking at something, when you're experiencing it, when it is that it's verb, whether it be an artist who intakes a lot of different stimulus or somebody who doesn't consider themselves an artist, but they, but they do use this kind of vision because we all have vision. We all have subjective vision. We all have um, in ourselves a creative part that we tap down a lot. So when we talk about seeing as a verb and the, what you were talking about, me going out and, and teaching these classes about it, what, what those classes and workshops really are, are just ways to point out to people that art isn't just art making. It's apprehending, it's seeing, and we as human beings, and as David even was pointing out earlier, we as human beings can use that act of art, that verb of art, to make a better life and, and actually get more confidence in ourselves and our own viewpoints. That's great. David, have we got you back? Hey, David. <laughs> oh, David's not moving. I'm yeah. thinking that maybe not. Um, yeah. At the moment. Um, well, Heather, Heather, let's carry on. Um, let's move away from Mexico and back to <laughs> back to Nevada. Um, I think the Mexican internet's probably not up to um, the the um, internet in Nevada. So let's go go with you. Oh look, I'm, we've got you outside, I'm to, David. I'm going to my neighbor's house. I'm going to my neighbor's okay. house. Okay. Well, that's good. This is really interactive. Yes. We've got David. Action. Action. We'll go, but we'll, what we'll do is we'll let David walk to his neighbor's house, see how it's going. And Heather, um, we've talked about art as a way of communicating and how artists have always been portraying the human condition and emotions. You know, we talked about loneliness and happiness, and this is clearly very relevant to art with me, what they're trying to do, trying to provide a place to discuss all of these things. How can we use this to focus on similarities in the art world, not the differences? Um, it really dovetails on what Mary was talking about in terms of what art provides. And one of the biggest aspects of the way that we talk about it is in the improvement of your quality of life. The arts require such 
courage and tenacity, both to make it and in supporting those efforts. Many involved, and, and I think Mary would agree, from practitioners to personnel get involved because they truly love art and their lives have been transformed by it. You know, art has the power to break all boundaries, social, political, economic, even linguistic, to speak to art as a verb and to be transformative through that experience. Arts really teach tolerance, diversity. They're very generative. And really, in terms of amplifying similarities instead of differences, oh. art connects us. It connects us and we can amplify and enhance these connections by providing platforms for artists to create and share. Oh, I, I agree with a lot, a lot that you said. And you know, when you look at early culture, uh, uh, in history, art was used to sort of bridge relationships between one country and another. Culture was used to bridge those relationships between one country and another, one people to another. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely agree with you, Heather. And I think it's really, you know, not maybe a subject for this panel, but a subject for future panels that I think would be interesting to discuss too. When we talk about similarities and differences, you know, Art World, Burning Man, Art With Me, festival culture being experiential art fair yeah. culture and exhibition and institutional culture being experiential. What do we need, mean by experiential? You know, one's a very deeply physical experience. One's a very deeply spiritual and emotional experience. And those two <laughs> go hand in hand, the physical and the intellectual, spiritual, and what happens both inside and outside. I agree. David, can you hear us? How are you doing? I'm back. Uh, you got your back, David. That's fantastic. What we've had is the traveling artist. We've had, I mean, this is a real sign that, you know, you could never do a panel where you had people sort of wander off and wander back on. But with this, it's just added a little bit of color and culture and everything else. And actually, oh, your friend's house isn't as decorated as nicely as yours. Um, no. Don't say anything, though. David, do you remember where you were? The girls have been filling us in on some fascinating insights into the history of art and we think that we've now got a lot of a lot of fodder for more panels in the future but um do you remember where you were do you want to sort of you know tell us a bit more about the art with me vision how it's manifested itself and the sort of social changes we're experiencing well um you you want me to uh and by the way living in tulum has its challenges um <laughs> Just so you know, actually, uh, on the internet, uh, cell and internet system, as you probably experienced before, Andrew, it's very challenging Absolutely. sometimes. So, oh, I apologize if my voice cuts out and out. But do you you want me to go back? Uh, I was uh, before I was touching on just a little bit of the vision. Yeah, absolutely. I think that'd be great. And the why of what we what, what we're doing. And so, yeah. if, uh, to before I got out, cut off. You know, when we started, when we, in, we were embarking on this idea as to, you know, what we were really trying to create and why, more so, even more important than what, but why, we, we realized where we start off with is that when, when somebody's inspired, we recognize that there's a moment where the individual inspired is kind of cracked open. We're more in a receiving mode. And through various retreats that we were doing here, we noticed that if, when people were in this inspirational space, that the information that was shared uh, and, the, and the stories that were being told uh, resonated deeper. And there was a, it was a, a bigger sense of connectivity to the individual that we were sharing the information with. So, uh, so myself, being an artist and being in the creative arts pretty much my whole life, thought that if, how is there a way where we could use the arts and, and creativity to create these inspirational moments so that people would, would have these uh, inspiring experiences and during these, these moments be able to, to educate and share and discuss and uh, talk about uh, things that are important, things that matter, things that matter outside of us and things that matter internally. And so that was the beginning of the concept of Art With Me. And for me, what it meant was, you know, basically creating a platform where people can 
have their ability to have creative expression, the creative process, highly creative experiences, and 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 have this platform be um, uh, a, an open palette for people to take this inspiration and have these inspiring moments to to educate themselves a little bit or to learn a little bit or to we like to we use we use the uh, the term awareness. We're trying to create creative in any ways to try and create more awareness. We're a big believer in um, self-care. So, you know, this idea that we, this word self-care, which is basically a conscious choice we all have to take better care of our mental health, our physical health, and our emotional well-being. And so, again, this is something that I really believe that through the use of the creative arts, um, this is a, uh, an area that we're trying to uh, express and explore through creativity. Um, and I think that's probably going to be the biggest change, isn't it? I mean, you know, team, I think really the sort of changing the way that art actually can change the way you live, the way you do everything. And I think that is the biggest opportunity that's probably coming out of this time. Don't you think that, Mary and, and Heather? What? Uh, Heather, do you want to say something or do you want me to go? Definitely. I mean, there's two projects that really come to mind that are being facilitated by artists right now. One is taking place in the Nevada desert by a sculptor named Oscar Toison. And it's actually a water reclamation project that's dealing with the um, educational aspects of teaching how to care for water and how to care for the self, and then how to utilize that water care system to regenerate the juniper trees in the landscape. So again, like artists are such visionaries and leaders. And as Mary said earlier, often ahead of us, you know, they're processing things in advance and we're catching up. And I think you can see it in the manifestation of projects that are being made today. I also feel that one of the things in our, that anyone you talk to, whether they're in the arts or not, one of the things that, uh, having been sort of more housebound now, shall we say, many people talk about the time they have, that as, as much as they miss going out or they miss this or that, they have more time a little bit to themselves, to their families, and time to sort of read the book they didn't read or want to read the book or figure out what book they want to read. But the point is that, that we live in such a fast world, no matter where we live, whether it's Tulum or, or Nevada or New York City, the, the whole idea that we're always going to make time for something, but we don't. And the one thing uh, that, that this period gives us is the time. And when you look at time, you look at the ability to reflect and you look at the ability to observe. So I think that that uh, mixed with what you're talking about, David, and Andrew, about what Art With Me can, can bring in the future to yeah. people are some of those experiences and maybe even some of those tools, some of the ways I, to look at what artists do and talk about bringing out that artist or that creativity in oneself, even if you're I not. I mean, that's, that's really interesting, Mary, because when I first sort of moved down here and when I first met David and met the, the crew from Art Me, the sort of care with me side of it sat there. And although it was the core of what David put in place, in the, it didn't sort of link, it just didn't sort of, And actually the one thing that I feel that's happened, I don't know if you'll agree, David, it's suddenly sort of, it's like a ding moment. It's like, actually, this is what it's about. This is... Yeah. This is so much, and it's suddenly, it's like you foresaw it. Yeah, I think, Andrew, a lot of that came also from us not having our communi communication channels in place as a new event. We're still organizing ourselves and getting ourselves uh, equipped with the right team of people. You know, but one of the things that was happening during the event that people just weren't aware of because is, is how much of our budget went into uh, this care with me aspect because Care With Me isn't, what, what we're not is we're not an environmental festival, okay? We are uh, a festival that has passion and authenticity and a deep concern and a deep care for many things. It's not just the environment. And so one of the principles of the, of the event was that we were taking 30% of our budget, not 30% of profits, but 30% of our budget. And we were devoting it towards free and public events for the community who are not we didn't we want to engage the whole community. We want to do things for the community. It's not just the tourist event. 
It's an event that, you know, wants to, wants to have activity all year long, not just, so what, what, in the beginning, like we, we were like, I wasn't, we couldn't have this event, right? Without doing a free concert in town. We did a free concert for 10,000 people. And the way that they got their tickets was they had to bring a minimum of 15 recycled bottles to <laughs> our recycling station in order to get our tickets. And we collected 4,000 pounds of plastic. So this is the type of thing that, you know, unfortunately this whole care with me element was just in the beginning, it was always a very big factor, but we're now that we're getting more organized, we're able to get the message a bit more across. And I think when you first came into it, we didn't really have the messaging. Curve. But I think it's also, it's also really about how, you know, how the, tying it into the whole artistic side of it and yeah. the art side of it too is really becoming relevant. Well, art, but, hmm? yeah, the art is, the art is essentially, it is, it is, every aspect of this event is art yeah. it's the creativity it's the imagination we are an event that it, 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 we are an event that embodies imagination so that's at the core everything every, art has to do with every aspect of the event yeah mary um we sort of touched on it before you believe we should use art as a guide by discussing and providing examples to help us sort of see the world the way artists do to better understand ourselves and the world around us. But do you think we can really all be artists? Well, in, in the definition that David has, I think we can in terms of bringing out the creativity in ourselves. Um, I do think that there are all kinds of art and I do think there are all kinds of artists, but I, so I think it's semantics. I think we all can bring out um, the, the artist within ourselves. Uh, not to go too historic, but Joseph Boyce, a very, very influential contemporary artist who's uh, long since gone, but he talked about that in a shamanistic way, that if you look back in history to cavemen, there was always the shaman, and the shaman was the person that mixed in with the medicine man, he was the, the creative spirit, and he kept that community going in the creative way, almost like the magic of it all. And so in that way, I do think we are artists in, in all of us. Yeah. We sort of tamp down that creativity, uh, but you can kind of get that unplugged if you, if you work at it a little bit. But I also think that I, I taught art school for many years. And when I, uh, what I would teach, I would always say, I can't teach you how to be an artist, but I can teach you how to see more so that whatever you have in you can expand. And I'd rather leave it at that definition. Yeah. I mean, I know, Heather, I know, Heather, we discussed sort of ancient art and have you got any sort of views on that as well? Well, I really enjoy what David and Mary have expressed about anyone being able to practice art and bring creativity into their lives. And one of the aspects of our conversations I really enjoyed most yesterday was talking about giving people artistic license. You know, not everyone grew up around art. I didn't grow up with a museum. I'm from Las Vegas. I didn't grow up even knowing that it was socially acceptable to study art history. And after a lifetime of a career in art, what I've realized is a lot of times it's about permission. It's about giving a license. It's about letting people know that they have the power within themselves to make art, to appreciate art, to support art. And I think when you empower the viewer, instead of making art more distant or difficult or more accessible or more out of range, you set up these false boundaries. And I think part of what our responsibility is, is to allow people to be creative and to bring that practice into their life, whether they want to make art or whether they want to collect it or whether they want to interpret it. It's a lifelong love. Actually, that's really interesting. And actually, that, that leads nicely into the next question I had for you, David, which was, um, you know, I think from what I know, you developed your artistic eye and your passion through architecture and through sculptures, one of your passions as well. How, you know, tell us a little bit more about that and also how you're using this to help art with me push the boundaries. Um, well, as a sculptor, I mean, ironically, I, I mean, I've always been in business. I, I had, unfortunately, I always wanted to be more of the artist, but I had the business take up much of my time. So I, a lot of it was 
doing uh, my art through architecture. So I would build rooms that were, would sculpt the room around you. And I would approach the architectural design, not from an architectural mindset, but more from a sculptor's mindset by, by uh, engulfing people in these spaces. And so my architecture was always very sculptural, sculpture-like. And then as I was able to spend more time getting, getting involved in actual sculpture itself, um, which ironically was because of that, uh, uh, it was the Burning Man event was pushing me to do more of the, of the sculpture, not architecture. When I was wanting to bring what I was, uh, my sculpture work to art with me, it was a bit of everything. It was a bit of architecture, it's a, it's a sculpture, and then it was also the uh, experiential interactive part. And so uh, for, the, for, the, for, for my end, my focus, uh, aside from producing the event, is to create these art pieces that you know, have this, um, uh, this, the, has this architectural, uh, all encompassing, engulfing. So you you tend to want to these art pieces will surround you. They'll wrap you. You're not standing outside of them. You're standing inside of them. And they all have this kind of. They have a very heavy interactive experience. But they're also trying to evoke emotion. And the and the emotion that I'm, what I think a, a lot of times is art. It kind of it, it moves us, right? It almost gives me, and I think it gives people what we're lacking. You know, in a way. And whether it be joy, fun, sadness, pain, there's this kind of element of it which I think balances us. I don't know. And, and so for me, you know, I'm being moved by, uh, uh, like at Burning Man, for example, the things that I was drawn to towards were, was the art that was that invoked sadness or pain. Because for much of that time, I, was gonna bring, I didn't really have a lot of sadness or I didn't really have a lot of pain in my life. And I was very, mm -hmm. so I, I find myself drawn towards these art, uh, art pieces that tend to touch on things that I'm actually lacking, right? So the, my focus now on these art pieces are to, to, to hopefully to, uh, and create these, these really joyful, playful, I think art needs to be more fun. I think it needs to be more relaxing, like the way relaxing, like, the way that we relax around music, you know? And so uh, a lot of the pieces that I work on have beds in them and you're on a bed, <laughs> you're, you know? You're literally in this really comfortable pod moving through a piece of art, you know? Yeah. And so my, 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 like right now, my interest is really on, you know, creating these, these interactive art pieces that are based on, you know, how do we be, how do we bring more play and more joy and more fun into, into the art experience? Yeah. I don't think I'm, I mean, I, I know Mary terribly well and I've just got to know you recently, but um, I sort of, to begin with, I was like, oh my God, how will they interact? Because they're from such different ends of the sort of art spectrum. You know, we've got David, Burning Man. Mary, have you ever been to Burning Man? Yes, actually. Oh, you have? <laughs> oh, God, I didn't realize. <laughs> yes. And how did you enjoy it? A lot. I was there a very short time, yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> but yes, I wanted to see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Heather, I wanted to come back to you because um, one of the things I know, obviously, um, we discussed earlier is you've been putting together this collection of female artists, um, which seems to have become a very big focus in the last few years. Thank you, Victoria Beckham. I think <laughs> she was the one that suddenly had this sort of whole fad going. I don't think she knows that Elizabeth Vijay Lebrun was actually painting a while ago. Um, but please tell us um, why your work here has helped you have a sort of better understanding of what matters in art and, you know, to give us a little bit more information. Well, it really weaves back into a lot of our conversations about experience and the human condition. You know, art in art, as in other industries, the gender divide is still very palpable. You see it in pricing, you see it in the pay structure, and also what gets shown in museums and galleries. We have right now in our grasp what is a great opportunity for change, as artists are incredible storytellers and have the fearlessness to discuss these issues in their practices. Understanding the work of marginalized voices, women, um, other, you know, gender, social, politically marginalized artists really provides a broad scope with which we can understand the complexity of the human condition. 
Artists, as we all share, are truly visionaries. They're always ahead in their thinking and in their ability to address issues as they're happening. Artists' voices, as Mary said earlier, they're very prescient. As someone who has made a career of listening, women artists have taught me how to lead, how to challenge, how to be kind, and really how to shoulder, how to shoulder the weight of the world. And yeah. it goes back to the title of this panel. It's not that it matters just in art, it also matters in life. Brilliant. So I think what I'd say now is that we've sort of touched on about 400 different subjects. So what we've got is a load of stuff for the future, for future panels. But I want to, to sort of really talk a little bit about the future and, and you guys and what you think about the future. Mary, Art in the Future, a snap view. What will be the three biggest changes over the next few years? Well, I think whenever there's a catastrophe, if you will, uh, the macro and microcosm becomes a very big issue for artists. Like artists are very universal in a lot of ways and they kind of go on tangents, but they usually do it from starting point from within. If you remember after 9-11, if you looked at a lot of the artwork that was made, it was much more intimate, much more poignant, much less grand in the sense of um, uh, trying to be a spectacle. Uh, for a lot of artists and it was much more emotional so i do feel that these experiences um, that we're all going through worldwide now will have a lot of effect on the on the artists themselves and how they uh internalize or their internalizations will manif will become uh, uh manifest themselves let's put it that way in their work so that's that's the one change the other change is i think it's very interesting about uh, there are many many different art worlds experiential art worlds um connoisseurship art worlds uh asset collecting asset um art worlds and i do think that that's going to all have to filter out in a whole different way of how we approach art because a lot of the channels that we approach art now and where the art world got away from itself are not going to be possible um, in the way that we've experienced them previously but it, but art never dies i mean art has always been alive and art is part of one's life and that's why if you look at other cultures and how they have art in everything they do to to david's point we're going to see that more and more like a like a you know i think on a more gra i hate to use the word grassroots level but more grassroots level more more intimate more, yeah, yeah. more visceral david do you agree with that as you sort of what are your yeah. thoughts no I, I i do agree with that i i think um to add a little bit i think uh, i see over the last 10 years um where i've been more involved in the art world and less in the architecture and the business you know it's also this trend where i like the idea of of art more of it moving outside and not and and less i mean i i appreciate i mean all areas of art and i and i love the uh, the gallery spaces and the mu museum spaces but i do see this trend where uh, art is uh, is moving uh, in a direction where you're outside more and um i think that we're gonna see uh, more and more this trend of these, uh, again, I go back to the large scale interactive art areas where you know, people are having these, these profound art experiences now where they're no longer just um, a witness to the art. You know? yeah, yeah. And so this excites me, this excites me. I mean, I, 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 just the other, uh, just last year, I had a friend of mine and I took her to, I'm not gonna, took her to an event and I had, uh, three days of this incredible experience in this interactive art. And we we're driving home and she just looked at me and she just looked at me and she goes, I think I'm gonna be a nicer person now, right? <laughs> and, That's really nice. and it was like, it really hit me because I knew the experiences we were having during, at, at this event where, this, where, where she was engaging with people in this incredible artistic environment and these, was having a profound effect on her. But to shift somebody who I know I mean, who's generally, she's not really that nice of a person. <laughs> uh, at, least if, at least if you don't know her, you know, but so, so that, that really resonated with me. Like, how do we use art? I mean, imagine if we can shift people through just a few encounters 
that that big of a shift that someone's willing to yeah. change personality in them, you know? Yeah. Heather, my question to you is, how do you think we can better interact with and help artists in this different world, you know? I'm really excited. I just want to um, segue through David's expression of art, taking art outside. I love that so much. I'm a Nevadan and we're <laughs> celebrating this year 50 years of land art. Oh. And land art is not necessarily one of the most popular genres. It doesn't fit in museums. You can't show it. You have to make a pilgrimage to it. You have to love it enough to get in your car. And one of the earliest works of land art we have here in Nevada, it's called Double Negative, and it's by an artist named Michael Heiser. And it's two enormous cuts in a landscape into the Moapa Valley that he did with a bulldozer in the early 70s. And I mean, you have to drive out there. It is rocky. It is scary. There is no clear <laughs> map. You are following coordinates and you get there and it's one of the most it gives me the chills just talking about it but you know it's like taking they had this idea of taking art outside and it was really hard to find support for it imagine in the 70s telling your collectors I need x half a million dollars to rent this bulldozer and to go out and to make a cut in the landscape and people thinking like well what does that even mean well I think, um now more than ever, artists need our support. If you have the means, buy an artwork. It doesn't have to be expensive. Anything you can do to provide a platform for artists is incredibly important. Their jobs are not stable. Sales are not stable. They depend on viewership and they depend wholeheartedly on us. There are organizations right now giving emergency grants directly to artists. So I would say consider if you can, and again, if you have the means and there's no amount too big or too small, it's not a cliche, it's a reality of COVID-19. I know we're all hurting, but consider contributing. Our entire ecosystem depends on the artists and how fiercely we're willing to defend them. Thank you, Heather. Mary, your biggest takeaway from the last six weeks, whatever it's now been in isolation? Uh, well, my, uh, what, uh, that's hard to say because not so much has changed for me because I'm so internal to begin with. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I would say that I, I do see that when you have times like this, um, talking to a lot of artists and, and talking, um, talking a lot about real things now, not career so much, not, not events so much, but, but human beings and lives and being and living and kindness and humanity. And I do, I do feel that if there's six, six months of anything, you, there's more talk and action about that than there usually is. So uh, I guess my takeaway from these, all of these events is that art will always matter, art will always live, and art is always in our life because expression is always in our life. And, uh, and we have to support um, ourselves and our humanity with kindness. Thanks. And David, last word from you before we close. Um, you know, what, what have you spent, you said that to me that, you know, isolation has been fascinating for you to first time in 10 years, you've actually had a little bit of time to yourself and um, be able to focus on it. What's your sort of takeaway over the last few weeks? Oh, I think we lost you. Oh, it looks like he's stuck. I think you're frozen. Let's see if he comes back. If he I doesn't. I just want to make one quick little segue. Yes, of course, I, Heather. 4 p.m. got bumped up to 3.30. So I only... <laughs> okay. Well, listen, everybody. All I'd like to say is thank you very much for participating. We've got a nice shot of David frozen there, but really interesting. And... Um, Hopefully, there'll be many of more, more of these to come and stay safe. Thank you Let's so much. Thank process. you so much, Andrew. You did a great Bye. job. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.